Good morning, and thank you for joining us for worship at Christ Church, where we are building inclusive community, sharing Christ's transforming love. We celebrate together in worship today, the spirit of the living God, moving through us and bringing us together spiritually in community and love. We pray you feel God's presence in a real way throughout this worship service. If you're new to Christ Church and want to get better connected to this community of faith, text hello to the number that you see on the screen. We'll reach out to you with a message from our pastors and connection team. Please take a moment this morning during or after the worship service to visit the church website, ChristUMC.net, where you can submit any prayer requests that you might have and learn more about our secure online giving opportunities. If you're worshiping with us online, we ask that you record your attendance on the website. If you're with us in person this week, we have your attendance recorded on the sign-in sheet. Our kids and youth ministry are continuing to find new and exciting ways to share the love of Christ. If you or your family have not gotten a chance to be a part of the fun yet, you can visit the Christ Kids and Christ Youth pages on our website and sign up to receive emails and learn how to get connected to everything that God is doing in the lives of the kids and the youth of our church and our community. Whether you're joining us online or in person, Thank you again for being a part of our worship. Wherever we are physically, we celebrate that we are together in worship as Christ Church. I invite you to join me for our call to worship and act of praise. We gather today seeking the peace Christ gives. We gather in spite of conflict and doubt within our souls. We gather longing for the breath of God's spirit to give us courage and renewal. Come, Jesus, and enter into our hearts. Bless us through the power of the spirit and give us the courage to live as your disciples day by day. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen.
Thank you for joining us in worship today. We are so grateful for all the ways God is leading us as Christ Church to connect, to grow, and to give. Thank you to each and every one of you who are faithfully mailing your tithes and offerings into our church or continue to give through our secure online giving platform. You're making a difference. For those of you who want to start to give, you can access online giving by visiting the church website at ChristUMC.net. Your faithful support of Christ Church is meeting the needs and changing the lives of individuals and families throughout our church, our community, and our city. It's exciting to see Christ Church discover new and unique ways to live into our mission of building inclusive community, sharing Christ's transforming love. Everything that we have is a gift from God. May God continue to bless and multiply all of our gifts for the work that needs to be done in our community and our world. As we enter into a time of prayer, I would invite you to share your prayer concerns by either calling the church or visiting our website and leaving your prayer concerns there. Won't you join me now as we pray together? Lord God, we thank you that you are sovereign. We thank you that you are good. We thank you that you do not change, that you are our rock. Lord God, we pray that you can continually remind us that we can come to you in our times of need, when we are in need of your strength and in need of your guidance. We thank you that you are always listening. We ask that you show us in a real way who you are and what you're continuing to do in our lives. Thank you for your salvation and thank you that you are a God who never stops. We pray that you continue to do this work in each and every one of us. And won't you join me as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
This week, we continue the series called The Power of Practice. It's not too late to go back to ChristUMC.net to watch past sermons in the series, worship, meditation, prayer, and fasting. Study, simplicity, and celebration are what remain in the series. Last week, I got some good-natured ribbing from people saying, and some yelling from a distance, practice, 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 and pray, pray, pray. Practice, 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 and pray, pray, pray. I thought this week I would name this sermon Practice, 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 Serve, 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 but thought better of it. I didn't want anyone toilet paper in the church building because of the repetitive nature of my sermons. Instead, my sermon is called, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, to serve woman or man or them. Now stay with me. Has anyone seen To Serve Man, a Twilight Zone episode? It's episode 89 that aired in 1962, part of the renowned groundbreaking series. Do you remember the classic opening for the series? Here it is for To Serve Man. Respectfully submitted for your perusal, a canamid, height, a little over nine feet, weight in the neighborhood of 350 pounds, origin unknown, motives, Therein hangs the tale for in just a moment, we're going to ask you to shake hands figuratively with a Christopher Columbus from another galaxy and another time. This is the Twilight Zone. Flash forward into the future and Michael Chambers, a central character, is in a sparse room. He refuses to eat food that comes through the slot in the wall. I promise I will return to this scene. Now flash back into the past, and the Canamits, the aliens, show up and seem too good to be true. They offer humankind advanced alien technology for free. For example, the design of an atomic generator for cheap electricity. The Canamits seem like a philanthropic bunch who truly want to make the lives of humans better. The aliens arrive to serve man, to serve woman, to serve humankind. Now the poet Roger Hancock says, nothing is ever free, though to you it be, somewhere, somehow, someone paid. And you know what? Those technological advancements were not free. Someone ultimately paid. Guess who paid? Returning to the opening scene, Michael Chambers, along with many others, climb onto the Klanimitz spaceship to take these aliens up on an offer to show humans more wonderful things on planet Kanamit. Well, it turns out Michael is in that room on a spaceship for a reason. The Kanamits kept Michael and others prisoners to fatten them up. To serve man turned out to be a platter from a Kanamit cookbook. Michael was an important ingredient for recipes for Kanamit meals. Can you say I'm going to gobble you up? In the church, we don't want to be canamits. No, 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 no. We want to be servants, volunteering freely, honoring God and helping others. Now, servant is an archaic term that reminds us of the lowly status of the downstair staff in an Earl or Count's manner. Visualize PBS's Downton Abbey or Upstairs Downstairs. Today, let's shed the negative connotations of the word servant for our purposes. We are to be servants of God and to the people. We are to be humble in our lives like servants, including volunteering at church, unlike those canamits. Today, I share two scripture, both from the New International Version, that highlights humbly serving others. The first is Philippians 2, 3 to 5. Hear these sacred words. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Our second scripture comes from Galatians 6, 9 to 10. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. 
Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. John Wesley, a theologian, said, One of the principal rules of religion is to lose no occasion of serving God. And since he is invisible to our eyes, we are to serve him in our neighbor, which he receives as done to himself in person, standing visibly before us. Wesley tells us to serve God and people. We can't see God, but we surely can see people around us. By serving people, we serve God. Now, my dad certainly served in the tradition of both of these scriptures and John Wesley's exhortation. Dad was selfless, honoring God, and did good when volunteering at church. I have a couple of photos here of him. He started serving later in life, much of it intensively in his 30s to his 40s. No, he was no cannabis. He was a Lutheran. Yes, a Lutheran. That's where I got some of my high church ways going even further in my love for Catholic and Episcopal smells or incense and bells during communion and ancient monastic prayers. Anyway, back to my dad. He wore many hats when he served a church. He led the finance committee for many years. In conversation with the committee and pastor, the church successfully invested in stocks growing in endowment. On Sunday afternoons, I often sat on a stool watching the ushers, my dad included, counting the tithes and the offerings. Later, my dad, my brother and I would get in the car and dad would drop the blue zipper plastic envelope with the cash and checks into a slot outside the bank. Finally, when the pastor preached at other churches, he took my dad along as support and company. My dad isn't much of a talker. So as the pastor mentally prepared to speak, I'm sure dad offered the pastor silence and space to process. Dad carried the pastor's stuff from his Bible to his notes and anything else the pastor needed toting. Baptist traditions call this service, this type of service, supporting a pastor, and that's an armor bearer. Now, what's that? In ancient Israel, a servant would carry and care for the armor of his master. The armor bearer basically took care of all the master's material needs. In ancient Israel, King Saul and his son Jonathan had armor bearers. Translated for today, my dad took care of the pastor, so the pastor took care of the church. No armor, but plenty of support. From my perspective, my dad served selflessly, never asking the pastor for a thing. Now that's service. That's to serve, serve man, woman, and humanity. And that's something that we need to think about as we continue. Now Philippians 2.4, I like the version in the message, reflects my father's selflessness serving the pastor at this Lutheran church. And the scripture says, put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. Basically, he forgot about his own selfish needs, and that's what we should do. Make others a priority. Don't obsess about getting ahead and help people. Men, many are already doing this at our church. Others are willing to begin to do the same. That's my hope. The best example of selfless service to others is Jesus Christ. Unlike the Canaanites, Jesus wasn't sauteing humans based on recipes for the joy of cooking humans. Jesus was selfless when he washed the feet of the disciples, followers of Jesus who were learning from him. I know some people are saying, ooh, yuck, P-U, wash feet? Moving past the yuck factor, Jesus was the leader of the disciples, so consider power dynamics in our modern and ancient worlds. It's like Jesus the supervisor washing an employee's feet at Home Depot. Can you imagine? Well, in the ancient Middle Eastern world, no matter the status, if someone visited you at home, the host got down on the floor and washed some feet. Host showed honor humbling themselves to a visitor. Now keep in mind, visitors came in wearing sandals with the dust on their feet. But today, would we be willing to do the same and humbly serve others like ancient people, and more importantly, like Jesus. Would you get down on your hands and knees on the dusty floor using your hands to wash away dirt from somebody else's feet? This is a humbling sacrifice in serving. Think about it. We could learn a thing or two from Jesus who said in John 3, 13 to 17, 
You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Know that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet. You also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Amen. Everyone who is listening today, we are unassuming or we are called to be unassuming, serving others no matter anyone's status. Jesus is very clear that people in high places should humble themselves and do good works for others. Jesus directs us to strive for equality. We do this for the glory of God and to care for others. Literally and figuratively, wash some feet serving in countless ways. That's parking lot duty, that's facilitating a class, that's working with our children and youth, and the list goes on and on. I'm not telling you this, Jesus is telling you this. Are we ready for the ultimate sacrifice to serve as volunteers at church, at Christ Church? One of my favorite films is the 1987 Untouchable, starring Kevin Costner as government agent Elliot Ness and Sean Connery as beat cop Jim Malone. Both of them were doing everything to convict and jail the infamous gangster Al Capone, played by Robert De Niro. In a church, this is a scene, an ironic location to plot the demise of a gangster, Malone asks Ness, what are you prepared to do? Now in the film, both men resolve to get Capone by any means necessary. Shifting the question of what are you prepared to do to a Christian context means more something different. It means prayerfully preparing by asking some questions, submitting to God, and taking further steps. Why have I been waiting to serve or volunteer? How can I submit to God by serving? Do I need a rest since I am burned out from serving? What am I prepared to do next to serve? Tell God the answers to these questions and ask God what is next. Tell a sister or brother about your struggle and next steps. I spoke and looked to a few of our own at Christ Church for inspiration as each person listening thinks about serving. Here's what I asked our siblings in Christ. What does serving mean to you? For the kids, it was, How do you help at church? And back to the adults, how do you experience God when you serve others? Now let's take a look at the video to hear what our siblings had to say. I help out with the youth. I'm involved in the youth. I help with our spaghetti dinners. I'm also in the youth band um, and I sing in the youth band and we record for almost every Sunday. I see him in people's smiles usually, like at youth when the kids are having fun and whether that's like in worship or in the lesson, I see God through their smiles because they're so happy. And when I'm singing, I see um, the audience's smiles and their reactions to the songs to see that they're actually involved in there. They are um, listening to the words and seeing God from the, their seats in the audience. Well, on Saturday, I, I brought, I brought, um, I um, had, I, I made everybody come to the, um, come and buy snacks. Oh, that was good. I'm very proud of you. So how many people do you think you brought over to get snacks? About like a thousand. A thousand people. You did such a good job. Thank you for helping at church. For being a good friend and helping people and stuff. And how did you help on Saturday? Um, I helped with, um, my mom set up the stage. Great job. I'm so proud of you. Thank you for helping at church. You're welcome. I serve our church in a number of ways, including providing opportunities for fellowship and to bring folks together, both 
folks who are familiar with Christ Church as well as those who haven't been to Christ Church before, giving opportunities for people to work together and to play together. I've experienced God through serving a church, both by God offering and providing me with ideas and creativity, as well as offering other folks the opportunity to use their gifts and talents. Now, weren't the kids cute? I wanted to give them lollipops or ice cream for doing such a great job and serving. We are never too young or old to serve. Now, someone here at Christ Church said the following in answer to the first and last questions. Through UMW and Circle, God has helped me to see the power of missions to reach out to those in poverty, hunger, and oppression. It has also given me fellowship and working together to bring God's love a little closer to each other and others. Praise God. Our friends in these videos and through these words serve faithfully at church, our home, our community of faith. Galatians 6.10b from the message affirms this saying, let us work for the benefit of all, starting with people closest to us in the community of faith. As we do this good work, think of the church as a warehouse. The warehouse is a central place where experienced people equip trainees to work, to serve. Extending and further explaining the metaphor, we start at the warehouse, that's a church, in the safety of a place where many of us know. We work at the warehouse, we serve at the warehouse like we do at church. Later, we will take the things that we have produced, dresses and sweaters, elsewhere. That would be the word of God, our efforts to serve in the communities that are local, national, and international. We go back and forth to the warehouse to learn more, spend time with coworkers. At church, that would look like covenant groups, small groups, and classes with friends. I encourage you to do that. And still, we serve the church. We grow and are refueled at the warehouse or the church to serve in and outside the walls of the church. We have pastors and staff who serve in the warehouse, that is the church. We also have so many volunteers who will help you along. Now here's the part where you might discern your gifts or skills in a spiritual context to match a ministry. Few of these gifts are administration and giving. Take some time and read scripture that outlines these gifts. They include Romans 12, 6 to 8, 1 Corinthians 12, 8 to 10, and 28 to 30, and Ephesians 4, 11. On a few occasions, I have mentioned some of the ministries under my umbrella at the church, and this prayer shawl comes out of that ministry, one of those ministries, um, where people volunteer using their gifts. Consider serving as you match your gifts to some of the amazing ministries of the church, Get ready to jot down the name of the ministry. Later, you can search for more information at ChristUMC.net. Christ Kids, Missions and Outreach, Traditional Worship, Contemporary Worship, Christ Youth, Discipleship and Connection, Building Facilities, Kitchen Management, including Wednesday dinners, office support, finance, stewardship, and endowment. Please email the church staff directly. And if you are figuring out your gifts or strengths, please contact Kelly Black, Director of Discipleship and Connection, at her email address. You are not alone. We have so many resources throughout the church. Please contact us. Please connect with us. So we have the models of my dad, people in our church, and more importantly, Jesus, when it comes to serving. Where you are seated, I encourage each person listening to figure out your strengths or gifts to match with a ministry. If you are already serving or plan to do so, Continue to do so humbly, like so many at our, at our church, and more importantly, like Jesus. And if you are tired from serving, take a break, practice self-care, take care of yourself for a season. There's something here for everyone. 
Let us pray repeating after me. God, use me. Allow me to fully serve you, God, and the people around me. Amen. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, thy presence my And thou my true word I ever with thee And thou with me, Lord Thou and thou only First in my heart Great God of heaven My treasure Heaven, Son, hearts of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. We again want to thank you for all who have taken the time to mail your offering to the church and have started or continue to give with our secure online giving. Your generosity allows Christ Church to continue to provide ministry in new and unique ways every day. If you haven't already, please be sure to go to ChristUMC.net and sign in using our attendance button. Share a prayer concern or give using those buttons as well. Don't forget, you can go to the website and find information about getting connected to a Christ group, the Christ Church Small Group Ministry. We offer community groups as a way to join together in homes and worship during this time. Each week on the community group webpage, you can find follow-up discussion questions to help you engage with the sermon. As we worship today and focus ourselves on what it means to serve, we're excited to let you know that Missions and Outreach is hosting a Christ in the Community service event on Saturday, October 24th from 9 to 2 p.m. at Bethany House Academy on the north side. It is a wonderful opportunity for your small group, your family, and friends to help prepare a space where children can learn and grow. It's appropriate for families with children ages 10 and above. There are a variety of roles to fill yard work, pressure washing, painting, cleaning, and much more. Lunch and beverages will be provided, and participants will need to provide their own transportation to and from the site, and we ask that you wear masks. Go to the church website at christumc.net backslash missions to register. We look forward to seeing you in service. Please join me for our responsive prayer of confession. In Jesus Christ, God broke the barrier of sin and pain, which separates us from our neighbor, ourselves, and our God. We seek God's grace so we might move from alienation toward new life. Oh God, grant us new life in you. When we deny your presence in our busy days, oh God, grant us new life in you. When we feel justified in our anger and resentment towards others, O oh God, grant us new life in you. When we judge others before looking at ourselves, O oh God, grant us new life in you. 
When we occupy ourselves in worldly matters and reject your peace and assurance, O oh God, grant us new life in you. When we refuse to follow your will because we are fearful and untrusting, O oh God, grant us new life in you. When we seek the security of false gods and turn our faces from your light, O oh God, grant us new life in you. Hear these words of assurance. There is no greater joy in the heart of God than this moment. For in this moment, we call upon God to grant us new life in the center of our wounded hearts. It is with great joy that God grants new life and forgiveness of our sin. Thanks be to God. Hey, no one wants to be a nine foot, 350 pound cannabis who selfishly serves himself and nobody else. We are better than that. I can't help but to send everyone forth with practice, 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 serve, serve, serve. Thank you.